Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Production funding for Common Ground is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Hi, and welcome to Common Ground. I'm your host, Ashley Hall. Common Ground captures the creative process of various artists living throughout our region. We delve into the veiled history of our area, plus we take you inside the cultural events that put the North in North Country. On this week's episode of Common Ground, we take a peek at the Dorset Art Fair, and we take you inside the Forest Edge Winery Art Fair in Laporte. We also introduce you to Patricia Lundeen, an organist from Breezy Point, who talks about the importance of keeping organ playing alive. I'm Sally Wysak Wills. I'm the owner of Sister Wolf Books here in Dorset. This is our third annual festival of authors and artists, and it's, we see it as an opportunity to showcase um, local creativity and talent. The store started the festival three years ago uh, when we decided to, we had a number of local authors that wanted to do signings, and we decided to group them together. We had 18 authors in our tiny little store. Um, it went really well. The next year, um, the whole town decided to get into it, and we expanded it to include artists. A number of them are doing demonstrations today, so it's not just seeing their work and hearing how they do it, but you can actually see what they do. We have several uh, Minnesota and local area artists in doing, uh, showing and selling their art and demonstrating. We have a big variety of artists. Um, we have the gal that does the glass blowing. She makes her own beads. There's also glass fusing, a quilter, um, stained glass work, jewelry designing, um, acrylic painting, so a variety of things. We would like to see it grow more each year, and we're, we're slowly finding more artists. This is an invitation juried art, art show, and um, I think that makes it more interesting to people. They know when they come, they're going to see quality product. The Lakes Country has such a laid back feel that it, it, it's really nice to come to a place where everybody is already in that mode. Even though I'm working, it causes me to de-stress because nobody else is stressed. I just appreciate that they're doing the festival because there are so many talented people in this area. You know, for a small town um, area, there's a lot of incredible people and to be included with it, I'm, I'm just very happy, <laughs> you know, to be included because... I, for years, have done the um, art shows, craft shows, that type of thing, and when my husband and I retired from farming, we decided we wanted to do something like this, so we came up here and uh, renovated an old barn, and that's what our, what our shop is. And many of our things are in it, and we also have consigning. Dorset is located right on the Heartland Trail, and the Heartland Trail is the first railroad bed that was blacktopped for biking and walking and recreation. It goes from Park Rapids to Walker, from Walker to Cass Lake and several years ago they uh, connected it and it now goes connects to the Paul Bunyan Trail that goes to Brainerd. So that there are a lot of bikers and walkers, a lot of people in the area that come for that entertainment. Many times we find that people do bring their bikes for our festivals. Um, they seem to, our parking is sometimes a little tight and if they can bring their bicycles in then they can still enjoy whatever is going on and and uh, enjoy our day. It's, it's a lot of nostalgia and it's a small town feel, we like to say, with a big city atmosphere. Dorset's claim to fame is we are the restaurant capital of the world. There are more restaurants per capita in Dorset than anywhere else in the world. Uh, they claim a um, population of 22, but we're quite sure they counted the cats and the dogs. I have authors here, we have artists and music on the street, but the, the shops and the restaurants are running specials today, and so 
um, it's really a good idea to visit every place in Dorset because it's happened today. Dorset works because we all decide to work together. I'm Sharon Schuster. I'm one of the co-owners of Forest Edge Winery. This is actually our home here. So my husband and I, well, this is where we live and work. And we are having our ninth annual art fair at the winery. And my husband and I were artisans prior to starting the winery. And so a lot of the artists that are here are friends of ours that we've known for many, many, many years. And, and they come and help us put this thing together. Man, we got an art fair, I tell you what. We do 26 shows a year, and this is our favorite art fair. Uh, great venue. They let you drink a little wine, and you meet the nicest people. Well, John, Paul, and Sharon do a great job. And Paul and Sharon travel the art circuit, um, and they realize that, I, I don't want to speak for them, but they realize that, that uh, one of a kind, original works of art by the people who actually do the, do the work, uh, it's important to expose um, those people, those artists, and that work to, to the general public. And again, we do 26 shows a year, and this is by far and away the best show. Um, to say nothing of the wine, it's handmade wine, it's internationally known, and it's, it's been awarded many medals itself. It's a high quality um, uh, beverage or wine, and it certainly uh, represents what they're, the aesthetic they're trying to, to deliver here in this, this art fair. Well, people are really wowed out about the quality of the work. I think that's what we hear about the most, is the quality of the art and just how much fun it is. It's laid back, it's entertaining, it's a day, day they can come and just spend the whole day listening to music and shopping at the art booths. And, and the artists love it too. They have, you know, it's a great event for them. Most of the art fairs that are going on now have become big, you know, corporation type events, you know, and um, this one is more like art fairs used to be back in the 60s and 70s. And so we get a lot of comments from the artists that have been doing this for a long, long time and they just love coming here. What inspired us to put on the art fair is the fact that we were artisans ourselves and did that for 25 years, going to art fairs throughout the Midwest and a few in the Southeast. And um, we just decided that we wanted to have that kind of an event here. We used to participate in one down in Cannon Falls that was put on by Peter Leach, who was a longtime potter, and he did something sort of like this, just small and intimate, and that's what we wanted to do. So, um, and we, plus it was a motivation for us to kind of get together with all of our old friends that used to do art fairs with us. And I think that it has a sense of community here, just partly because of the quality of everything, the camaraderie of the people, the, the interaction of people, and I think people like being here. And I think that's probably what does it, is they just, they like being here, it's fun. They have a lot of, I want to say a lot of art and craft people here, so that's really great to bring people in, and the free wine tasting is awesome, <laughs> obviously I enjoy it. Um, but my parents are in town for the weekend, so it was really a great event to bring them to and have something to do on a Saturday, and they're really enjoying themselves, so that's good. Oh, well, I haven't made my way all, all around the art yet, but um, the jewelry, I actually really like a lot of the jewelry, so it's kind of different, and I enjoy that. So, yeah, I've enjoyed a lot of the jewelry that I've seen, and some of the pottery is really nice, so. Well, we appreciate, speaking for the artists here, uh, we appreciate uh, the hospitality. We appreciate the fact that they know how to put on a good show. And, and uh, speaking for the artists again, I would, I would like to thank everyone who's come out here, whether they're, they're browsing or whether they're shopping. Um, it's their uh, commitment to coming out that makes it fulfilling for us. And whether they buy or not is really irrelevant. The fact that you meet the nicest people at art fairs is one of the principal reasons we do this. The things that we look for in the artists that come to the art fair is we're looking for something that's unique, something that's high quality, and another thing that we do that is probably unusual for a lot of art fairs is we feed all the artists at the end of the day. We uh, personally make all the food. Um, I've been making food all week and at the end of the day we'll all gather up here on the cobblestone and, and have a picnic. 
We're really proud of the food that we have to offer here. We have try to have something that's quality, that's um, that's not the run-of-the-mill kind of thing that you find at an art fair. They come, they do a lot of, of work to put together the food for the art fair and um, we want them to do really well when they're here. And it's been fun to get to know them. They come back every year. We started with the nuts, the second year that we were open and now that's expanded into the rest of the family and they put together their food booth. And then we have handmade ice cream maker and she is just to die for and her ice cream is great. And then this is the first year we've actually had a masseuse. So we hope that she's doing well over there. She's, I see her giving some massages right now. And uh, so if, good place to come and relax, have a little wine, have a massage, have some good food, listen to some music and buy some art. The event as a whole is just a great experience, but my favorite part is the wine tasting. <laughs> you know, I just think this is a really good event for people um, around here, around other areas to come and check out, just to really see what we can offer them. And you know, this is just a great, this event is just a great opportunity to come out and taste some wine, enjoy the food, see some artwork that from people around the area. It's just a great event to really get to know people and get to know the area and an establishment around the area. I think it's just a great event. They should probably have them every month. People who haven't been here before need to just kind of come out and see what we have to offer and have a great time. Uh, it's just a, it's a fun event and unlike any other that's going on in the area. I played piano from the time I was six and I always was interested in the organ because I heard it at church almost every week. Um, when I was about 10, the organist asked me to turn pages for her and I got a first-hand look at all the things that she was doing and how it all worked. I was just fascinated. I suppose being able to play so loud all by myself is really what hooked me. Um, so I started taking lessons when I was 15. And I think one thing that people need to realize is you can't carry an organ around with you to practice. You have to go where the instrument is. I couldn't even drive when I started to take lessons. My parents had to take me to the church to practice take me to the place where I had my lessons. So that it's, there was a lot involved in getting um, acquainted with the organ. It's pretty important that you have keyboard skills to start with. It would be more difficult if you had never played piano and weren't acquainted with the notes and, and the sounds that the instrument makes. It seems that younger people have an easier time using their hands and their feet to do different things. That's probably the, the trickiest part of playing the organ is just incorporating your feet, doing something different than your hands are doing. Your body is telling you how to sit, how to move, how to be in position. You're looking at music, you're reading three lines of music, which is more than a typical piano, two lines. You're thinking about the sounds that you want to use. You're thinking about keeping your fingers in contact with the keys. 
it's really fascinating how many things you're doing at one one time and yet then there's that part of the brain that kind of opens up and says I can think of some other things while I'm playing I can think of new ideas and creative ideas things I'd like to try things you know what about this what about that um, so it's it it uh, engages a lot of a person to play the organ and I, I find that challenging some people like to skydive or ski jump you know I just like to try to play a piece on the organ and get to the end and make some good music <laughs>
uh, you have to keep your fingers in touch with the keys. Uh, this particular instrument has 1,040 pipes. So the pipes that you see up in the case are the pipes that actually play the sounds that you hear. Um, the pipes are made of metal and wood and the length of the pipe determines the sound. So the very smallest, tiniest pipes are almost like a dog whistle. And then you have the lowest pipes being uh, down at the foot uh, on the pedal board. This would be the lowest sound that this organ can make. And the possibilities that the organ has um, it isn't just a church instrument, it's a concert instrument. There are orchestra pieces where the organ is called for as part of the composition. Um, they are installing organs in concert halls. Uh, and of course, a real fun use of the organ was the old silent movies where the organ was played as an accompaniment to the movie. Um, so there's a lot of times when the pieces that I use, I, I uh, I try to make a program that will interest the general public in organ music. I don't want, I love church music and I love the organ as a church musical instrument. I don't want people to think that the organ is only about church music. I want to show you some of the sounds, uh, why the organ can make so much sound with just one person playing. So when I play a single note, that's middle C, that's la with the voice. I can make the note go an octave lower, which is, means eight notes lower, but I'm still just playing one note, and I do it this way. Now I'm gonna add an octave. I'm still just playing one key. I'm gonna add one more. So by playing one key, I'm able to sound four octaves at once rather than having to stretch my hand out and play four notes at once. Um, I just want to do a little demonstration of some of the sounds here for you, uh, some of the possibilities. Let's start with the trumpets. <laughs> So just with this one, this is called a stop, with this stop and this stop together, I can make it sound like I have a whole uh, trumpet chorus up here. This would be kind of a more, more of a meditative, uh, meditative or meditation sound. to make it sound like we had maybe a bagpipe or uh, something of that sort up here. Uh, there are flute sounds and I'll use those. Kind of a Mozart style. And then sometimes you can use the sound to illustrate the words of a text. Um, this, this part of the text talks about the opening or the unfolding of um, people's hearts just like flowers. And so I'll make the sound open to illustrate that.
so much for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed the show and we look forward to seeing you next week right here on Common Ground. If you have a segment idea for Common Ground, please contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. individual segments or copies of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Production funding for Common Ground is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, Contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.